More than 50 years ago, it all began here on a small scale. Fritjof Detzner says it's hard to imagine today. The German businessman is very impressed by Singapore. The city-state is now a modern and very wealthy country, and its citizens are living longer and longer. So how do people live longer and remain healthy? That's the central question on Detzner's mind as he heads out for a round of interviews with scientists in the high-tech metropolis. First stop, a visit to a lab at the Genome Institute. Scientists here are cultivating stem cells used to produce miniaturized, simplified versions of the human brain. Clumps of grey matter, just a little larger than a grain of rice, but with huge potential. I can see the whole thing, I guess, and, and the round shape and the dimension of it, and it's crazy. So-called organoids are paving the way to new discoveries in healthcare. We want to see how genetic changes lead to a disease state, and we want to see how environmental toxins sort of precipitate the disease state. Because once we can create all these things in the laboratory, we can think about stopping the disease progression. And, and if we can do that, it gives us the lead into how we can then think about um, developing therapeutics for Parkinson's disease patients, for example. Um, you know, it opened up tremendous opportunities mm -hmm. in how we can tackle human diseases. Parkinson's disease is still incurable. And until now, research into it focused on controversial animal experiments. It's difficult to carry out research involving humans. No one wants to test things on their brain if they don't know how it will turn out. So producing miniature brains allows you to learn much faster. That greatly improves your chances of discovering a drug that will really help fight Parkinson's disease. Detzner is an internet entrepreneur and he believes technology will play a key role in making progress. But although the tradition is thousands of years old, Chinese medicine still plays a major role in healthcare in the ultra-modern city. I believe that in the context of medicine, we talk too much about high-tech, gene manipulation, and all those things that are made possible by technology. On the other hand, there's all this ancient knowledge about healing, like the use of herbal medicine, or just being there for another person. How important is the human relationship for healing a patient? How important is it for them to have someone they can talk to, someone to contact? Okay. Good luck. An operating room at Singapore's National University Hospital. I really respect doctors. They have a responsibility I wouldn't dare take on. It's one thing to build up a company and take responsibility for it, but here it's really about life and death. And new methods to repair human beings. You basically print a replacement part for a bone and implant it. Then this bone part dissolves over the years and the bone grows back, replacing the temporary prosthesis. It's fascinating. Osteopor, a startup here, is the company that developed this technology. So this is the part. A 3D printer creates bone implants. They're customized for each individual which means even people with very serious cases can be helped. For example, when large areas of the skull have been damaged. Six layers. Imagine you are an architect. You build the world tallest building. When the building architecture is finished, you have to remove the scaffold. We remove the scaffold. How do you remove it? By degrading it into 
carbon dioxide and water. So it's a biodegradable. You could say. But but the rate, see, the the, the 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 most important part over the last ten years, we have found that we stumble on a scaffold where the rate of degradation is slow. Mm -hmm. So the the cells have time to grow. Yes. Yeah. Brain tissue grown in a petri dish. Bone implants from a 3D printer. Detzner wonders how much longer it will be before science can build a human from the ground up. I can grow body parts, but not another human being. Because if you don't draw the line, then you're a mad scientist. A mad scientist is the one that has no limit. I think scientists must have limit. You cannot do everything, especially when you're near to playing God. The scientists who work in fields like these are driven to understand the fundamental puzzle of life, though most know it's a puzzle that can't really be solved. Friedhof Detzner thinks that's exactly what makes research like this so fascinating.